Good morning, Polly Nikes again with an Infinity Battle Report. Today we have a battle between my Vanilla Combined Army and Vanilla Hawk Islam. Vanilla battles are always my favorite in Infinity. I'm uh, not a fan of fire team rules, as many of you may know, and so I really enjoy the game when both players are not using them. Today's mission is Capture and Protect. And let me get my pointer here. Uh, I guess we'll use the... Okay, so we're doing Capture and Protect. However, we did make a couple of mistakes in the game. Uh, just to let you guys know right off the bat, we did not use data trackers. We both forgot them until like turn three and a half. And we did use an HVT. It says HVT not used right there. But, you know, we didn't read it closely enough at the time we were setting up, so we did not use this and or, or that. Nonetheless, the game plays out very well, as you will see. Primary objective, right? Get the beacon for three. Uh, yeah. Get it with your data tracker for two. Obviously, none of us will be getting that. Um, own deployment zone for one. Preventing for two and then the classified for one. And there is a um, intel on this, which makes the classified worth one more if it has the gear symbol on it. Okay. This is my army, and I did make this army with the mission and the opponent in mind. Um, first we'll start with normal stuff. Kurgat, Liberto, Nexus Hacker, uh, all models I'm really a fan of, played them quite a bit. And then I'm bringing my Raicho. I want to go first and just ram this Raicho right down the enemy's throat, as they say, and grab his beacon and run back. I figure if he's trying to protect it with Ghazis, I don't care because I'm a Morat, it can't be jammed, unless they're out looking at me with their Imorats, in which case I can probably kill them with my uh, Mind Dispenser or Multi-HMG, something like that. So he's going to be the primary go-to piece in this uh, in this list. Then we've got Ikadron, Q-Drone, Slave Drone for the Kurgat, my Shrouded Mine Lair. That's my second Mine Lair, as Roberto as well. You know, they're going to be there primarily to defend my beacon through uh, in a passive way. And then we've got uh, my Zerat, boarding shotgun. She's often a forward observer, not necessary in this mission, so I didn't spend the point on it. A couple of Dadarat's eyes, which I really enjoy. And then my second combat group, which is a Yaogat and two Pretas. Again, Pretas are great for defending my my, my uh, beacon. They're just kind of be standing around next to it, and you got to shoot through them. They're dogged. Or if you don't shoot them, you know they'll be running on my turn. I love them when going second. You just put them out in the open and the enemy can shoot at them. They've got a pretty good chance of living with Fizz 14 dodges and just getting closer to the enemy. So then they end up spending more orders trying to kill them, which is just fine with me. And then my Yaogat. So the Yaogat, uh, I didn't have enough points for a multi-sniper. So we're using the Panzerfaust as a stand-in multi-sniper, which generally is just fine. He'll get a couple of shots. That's all he really needs. I can reload him if I need to. He'll, he probably won't have any orders if I go second. In which case, I'll just dump them into the first group, because likely something there will die as well. Uh, that, that's my plan with that Yaga. It's also a decoy lieutenant. Some people may think that's your lieutenant, though that wasn't where I took it. Okay, my opponents. You can see there's a lot more guys in his list than mine. We've got this Quarj. Uh, I love this guy. Right? Multi-Spectre Visor and a Fatality 1 Mark 12. Very deadly. Govad HMG. It's got MSV1. It's a good unit. Fareed Killer Hacker. Um, I didn't realize they had lightning until I made this army list. So for the report, that guy's amazing at 16 points. Nafatoon, Gulam Sniper, Flash Pulse Remote, um, Camille Minesweeper, with the, yeah, the eight point non baggage one, uh, First Mutalia, Al Hawa Forward Observer, uh, also the Roberto Mine Layer, same reasons I have it pretty much. Asawira Spitfire, um, I think this guy's great. He's a solid heavy infantry Spitfire platform regeneration, he's good. Gulam Forward Observer, Gulam Sniper, Nafatoon. Uh, again, learning things as I make my opponent's list here for this report. Apparently only the Light Flamethrower version can be the Lieutenant. So future games I'll be able to narrow down my enemy's Lieutenant a little better. Rifle, Camille, the second Mutalia, Hanzakut, always super efficient models, and one Kum Biker. Again, if he has the opportunity, that's great for the objective. He can drive up and pick up the uh, beacon with it. Though my opponent did not make this list with the mission in mind, in particular, he just had the list with him at the time. So, yeah. All right, the board. This is the side my opponent ends up setting on, setting up on. Here is his beacon. Here is my beacon. Um, here's the board from my side. Again, my beacon, his beacon, right in there. One of the reasons he chose that side is there's this container next to his beacon, which has an open doorway facing that way. So uh, you can put a Mataria right inside of it or something like that and protect the beacon without even, you know, not being exposed at all. Okay. I have test run. 
which is a fine classified for me. It, this is the symbol that makes it worth plus one. So my second order objective is worth two victory points, assuming I don't have ten at the end of the game. Okay, my setup, starting on my left flank. Uh, I lost the lieutenant roll, and my opponent chose deployment, putting me on this side, taking that side with a nice box, and I chose to go first. Yes, that's correct. No, that's not, that's not correct. I'm going second in this mission. Um, I believe I chose to go second, despite that. Um, and now that I'm saying it, I think that I won the lieutenant role. Chose deployment, and my opponent chose to go second. Okay. Chose to go first, excuse me. Okay, anyway, here's my deployment. Here's my Zuryat up in the corner over there, prone behind my HVT, which probably shouldn't even be there. We got first Donoratai, Kurgat down here in the corner, first Preta. This camo token is my Liberto. The one up here is his mine. See this prone token in this building here? That's my Nexus Lieutenant Hacker. All right, moving across the board, you can see where that, that's the mine we talked about, that's the Nexus. So behind him, we've got the Ikadron, Slave Drone, uh, Q Drone, Second Preta. And this big gap here was originally, uh, I left it as an option for my Raicho. I was thinking about deploying him there because he's got a Slave Drone and Ikadron, because I love reloading the mine dispenser. Also, we could go over here, kind of behind this wall where you can see over it. Those were options. Okay, up here, we've got a shrouded mine layer. His mine is forward over here, kind of kind of at the edge of my, of my mid-zone. Uh, okay, over here, we've got the second daughter outside, prone here, and the Yaogat standing out in the open here. This looks like a weird play. It kind of is, but he's got neat lines of fire. One goes this way through here, all the way over to my objective. So he's covering that objective with his Panzerfaust and combi rifle MSV2. Uh, he also has a nice line of fire that goes down here, uh, basically over that prone Dadaratsai in this way. And the idea is, the first time the Dadaratsai sees or does anything, he'll throw a smoke right here. And then I'm covering that whole lane with Panzerfaust and MSV2. I can choose to engage or not, depending on what goes by. So even though he looks open back here, he's in a fairly good position. I believe. Oh, and you can see the Shrouded's Mine up here, which is right next to a car. All right, my opponent's deployment, starting on his left flank. We have a Nafatun, uh, I believe a Ghulam Forward Observer, the Kum Biker is here, the Bereed Killer Hacker, one of the eight point baggage bots, uh, another Nafatun, Ghulam Sniper, missing her head, uh, two camo tokens, this one, this one, is the Liberto in his mine, uh, moving over. This prone token here is on top of Agazi, who's indeed in that box. This is the Govad HMG. This back here is one of his eight point uh, flash pulse bots. The second Gulam sniper up here. Um, moving over a little bit. Nafatun, which is the lieutenant, and his other eight point baggage bot. And I think you can't quite see it, but on the other side of this building is the Koharj. Hope I'm pronouncing that close to correct. And this here, a camo token, is the Hanzukut, the other camo token, jump back, the other camo token we saw, that's forward. The other camo token we saw, yeah, this one here, is the um, Alhawa. Okay, there's that. All right, my reserve is my right jump, which I place on my left flank, not originally where I was intending, but I like his line of fire, and I like how hidden he is over here. There's a Ghazi on this side, but that doesn't really concern me. Um, okay, and his is the Asawir Spitfire fairly center on his board, prone behind his car. All right, so now the game begins. Mutawia moves up, doesn't do anything. Uh, it tries a long bomb smoke over here and fails. Uh, on that picture and this picture here, you can see the car, who's unpainted back here. This is where he aimed the smoke and it didn't land there. Uh, Mutawia in the middle moves up. He, I believe, also tries some kind of long smoke and fails. Biker on the other side, same thing. <laughs> he drives up to here. He tries a really long smoke, basically right in front of my objective, and fails. My Raicho sees this, you know, some long line like that, and instead of shooting him with my HMG, I shoot out a mine. It's basically right in front of the building that the Ghazi is moving around on the other side. We'll get over to it in a moment, you'll see a better picture. But this is one of my favorite tricks with the, uh, the mine dispenser. You see someone move, you put a mine protecting something you want to protect. It doesn't necessarily have to, you know, go at the guy who's moving. Um, a lot of players don't expect that either. So they kind of do like a sneaky move in the distance or something that gives you an arrow, and then suddenly they have to deal with a mine with their skirmishers. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can see the mine here that I dropped, and the Ghazi is just off ahead of it. Okay, this is the smoke that the biker tried to do, but it also failed. 
Uh, Gazi in the center moves up, throws a smoke. He may actually make that one. He also, may have also failed. They're all long range smokes. Uh, Gazi over here spends, I think, two orders trying to get this smoke down, but I believe eventually does um, for the for the cars to try to do, do something. Biker here moves up. Uh, the right show shoots at it with the multi HMG and misses. And uh, I think he fired another smoke. May have been successful, may not. I don't really remember. I don't think it was very relevant. He's specifically not coming around the car yet because he believes that this camo token is a mine, which is correct. Um, my hungry here dodged up a little bit, I believe, is what I'm showing in this picture when he saw a Gazi walk around somewhere. Yeah, the Gazi is on my left flank. Okay, biker now zips up to here. The mine was there, goes off on him and hits him. You can see that my shrouded is now revealed. This is because I know he has a chain rifle and he's going to fire it, you know, like this to hit both of them. But he was a camo token at the beginning, which means the TR bot can see him down this angle. The Hungry can see him down this angle, and of course these two, and down this way, um, the Yao guy. I think Yao got doesn't quite see him. Yao got sees him also. Okay, so remember my plan was just throw smoke here immediately as soon as I did anything? Well, instead I dodge because he's got a chain rifle coming in. The Shrouded dodges, the Hungry dodges that way, and the TR bot shoots, and the Yao got shoots with his combi rifle. Um, this goes very well for me. The biker dies to the mine, so all that shooting was irrelevant. The shrouded dodges back two inches, putting him about here. The <laughs> got a lot of marks on the screen. The Dadarase fails his uh, dodge, but passes his armor save and ends up right here. But most importantly, there's no smoke there, which I should have just thrown a smoke, even at the risk of losing my Dadarase. And there's this more angles of that. You can see where the TR bot is seeing and the and the hungry there. Okay. The Asawira now is moving up. It's behind this car. You can't really see it. But it started over here, and it crawls around the corner, because if it stands up, the Raicho will see it, and it shoots the mine that the Raicho laid, and it destroys it fairly easily. It just kind of scooches over there. Oh, yeah. There you can see now the mine's gone. The Gazi moves up. At this point, uh, we're kind of discussing what's going on. There is a smoke down here by, by now. The Hungry gets a little dodge up to here. I think the Gazi shoots at him with his pistol. And my opponent's like, I really want to get this Gazi up here next to your Raicho. At which point, I point out why. I mean, you can't isolate it. Um, you could possibly get, you know, past the Dadarata and get over and e Marat it, right? You would probably die doing so, but you might get it with an e Marat. But right behind it is my engineer, who won't be affected by the e Marat because he's also a Morat. So it doesn't really get you much. And my opponent agrees and uh, changes changes plan at that point. Um, Hungry dodge forward. Okay, it's, so the also weird starts to move up. That's that's the new attack route. He right, shoots the mine, comes walking over here where he's now clear from the uh, from the right show. Shoots and puts the Dadaratsai unconscious here. Again, my opponent's pretty sure there's a mine as one of these, but he doesn't really know which one. Uh, on the other side, he's just doing some coordinator order, moving up. The breed moves up. The Gulam moves up. It's probably the same time the also weird is moving up. Uh, and then we get this exchange where the Govad comes around the corner. And can draw a line of fire first to the Dadaratsai. The Govad has MSV1, so he ignores my mimetism. I attempt to throw a smoke here, but I fail and go unconscious. That's where he tries to put the smoke. And you can see the Govad right here, firing down that lane, right into the, the dot. Once he puts the, go, the dot unconscious, he moves a little bit more and he sees the, um, the Yaogat. Yeah, it's the same line, but that's it. Uh, okay, I guess that didn't happen just yet. The Asawira moves up to behind the car here, attacking or yeah, attacking with his Spitfire, the Hungry. Hungry puts a chain rifle on him. Hungry gets killed. Asawira makes his save. Uh, and then engages the TR bot here. He is in his good range, but I have mimetism and cover, and I'm in my uh, zero range, so minus three hitting on eights. But the TR bot goes unconscious from one shot there. Okay. This is actually the beginning of my turn here. So let's go back one moment. I didn't, I guess I didn't get a picture of the Yaogat getting killed. But the Yaogat does get killed by the Govad firing through here. It takes him two orders. Yaogat fires his Panzerfaust at him, uh, loses both face to faces, makes a couple saves, and then gets killed. Yeah, and all that happens. Okay, TR bot's there. All right, so I kept my orders and found myself with a whole seven orders remaining when I start my first turn. And I'm feeling pretty bad here because I'm not in a good position. I've got to get all the way across the board, right? So. I'm basically going to start spending orders on the tag, hoping to e even things out. This unconscious marker here next to the tag actually is the Dada Rasai's unconscious marker. The tag has not been hit by anything yet. 
the first thing it does is move forward and it jumps uh, vaults because its silhouette is slightly higher than this thing here, which gives it some amazing lines of fire. First shot, it sees that Ghazi, this sniper, that Ghazi, and that sniper. Um, when he's forward, I think. I, or maybe it was even over the top of this box because I'm really tall, the box is fairly tall. So he sees all of those. And I give them each one shot for my multi HMG with shock rounds because we've got Ghazis, right? I kill both Ghazis and I kill one sniper and the other sniper makes a save. But that was a great shot. I win like all four face to face rolls. It's outstanding. Okay, here's, sorry for the blurry picture, but here's the tag keeps moving up. It's now trading fire with the Asawira who's over here. He first has me out of cover, then I move over here and I'm in cover. And there's some fire going on there as well as with the sniper up here. It takes a couple of orders, but I eventually, a clearer picture when I get farther on there. Eventually, uh, this sniper keeps making saves and dodging. From on top of the box here, I have line of fire all the way over here to the Snaffatoon. He gets one round and goes unconscious. Um, and eventually I double crit the Asawira here, and he goes unconscious. He has regeneration, so it's not uh, not terrible for him. He can be able to get back up, but he is down. Okay, the tag, the tag's back in my deployment zone here, but what it does is it moves over to here, where I can use that heavy shotgun on 20s. That's amazing with this guy. And I fire the heavy shotgun into the quarge and into the sniper up top. That exchange uh, doesn't kill anybody, actually. The quarge makes his save, falls around the corner, and I believe that I just miss the, um, the sniper because he's outside of eight. Over the course of this, you see these two wounds here. My tag does take two wounds from, I think, one from a Spitfire and one from a sniper. But I am able to fall back all the way over to here, get into cover right here, and kill the sniper who was up there with one of my last orders, which I believe was the irregular order taken from the Liberto. And my actual last order, which right here's a better picture of the two wounds and where he ends up, um, is us checking line of fires on things. That's his camera token moving out. Okay, so my actual last order. I set my Icadron to assisted fire, which gives it burst two on the ARO. It's moved up with a coordinate order, so it has line of fire to the unconscious uh, Asawira. And that's why I gave it um, assisted fire. Because even though he's BTS 9, right, so flash pulsium isn't that great, I'll just pistol him. And, and as he's regenerating, he may, it'll be normal rolls, so he may go unconscious again as he tries to regenerate. Okay, my opponent's turn. This camo token moves out. And this was a. Uh, this is kind of a hard decision for me that I may have made the wrong decision on. Oh, something else happened first, which, uh, yeah. My tag, which is in this position against this wall right here. Right. So the, the quarge moves up to the corner here where you can see me with his damage 16 Spitfire, right? That's quite a dangerous thing. He fires at me. I make an armor save. Remember, I only have one wound left on the tag here. And I guts over to here next to the Dadarasai. So now I'm in cover from this box from the Quarsh. So, yeah, they can see it moved over. Okay, now the Quarsh moves up to here. I believe he takes another shot at me from there and then just holds that ground there. Okay, the, uh, now the Camo Token starts moving out. Camo Token moves out here, which is what we're seeing. And this is where I had a little bit of a decision. I decided to hold with my Camo Token over here and discover with the tag here. Now this is quite likely a mistake because the tag is not in cover in this direction. Um, so if the tag discovers, which it did, and the camo token decides to reveal, he can shoot at me, probably within 16, um, so probably on 14s, because it's camo guide with skill 11, but it's an unopposed shot, right? Three shots on 14s, and if I fail any save, I go unconscious. Uh, even though I armor 8, it's still uh, giving my opponent a uh, an opportunity to take out the tag that I probably didn't need to give him. I should have held with the tag and discovered with the camo token over here. Uh, I didn't do that basically because I didn't want to reveal my camo token yet. I like them being hidden. So that's exactly what happens. It reveals, it shoots at my tag, but I make the armor six. And now we've got Hanzakut out here. Who, uh, because this guy held the Liberto, he takes a shot with his light shotgun when she shoots, but misses. So. I believe the Hanskut tries again, moves over to here, and gets a light shotgun and a multi-HMG round, and this time is killed by the multi-HMG. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the Asawira, who's around the corner here, trying to regenerate. There's a line of fire here to the Ikadron that has assisted fire. I uh, double pistol him and kind of predictably do nothing, but I do do it. Next picture, 
Oswego comes around the corner to get a shot on the tag. Again, I'm out of cover here because I was forced away from this wall by the quarge coming in from the other angle. This is a great two-pronged attack, right? Force your opponent out of cover, engage them over there. And I can't fail Guts any farther that way because I can't get over my dead daughter Ratsai. And you can't stand on unconscious guys. Um, so the Oswego comes up, takes the shots here, the tag shoots back at him, and the pistols come at him again over here. And amusingly enough, the shots bounce off the tag, any ones that hit, and the uh, Ikadron puts the Oswego unconscious with one of his pistol shots. There's his unhappy face uh, unconscious marker. Uh, I think that... I don't know what this picture is. I think the uh, Hansel Cutter attack might have happened after that, where it moves over one and then gets killed by the multi-HMG. This is the end of my opponent's turn two. You can see an Affetune down here. It just kind of moves up midfield. It does get a very long range shot here on my Zuryat. Zuryat dodges on a one successfully, and the <laughs> Affetune gets a hit on a one somehow, and so they just cancel and nothing happens. All right, now we're going into my turn two. Start with my engineer moving up. The slave drone also moves up a little bit over there. This is a little tricky because if I fail my engineer check, the tag will go unconscious. I can then try again though, because it's not dead. So it's not that dangerous, but it is, is a little bit. And fortunately, uh, there's a slave drone moving up. Fortunately, I do repair it and then move over here into this corner. So the tag is now down to taking only one wound, which makes me feel a lot better. You can, you know do things without risking dying to a random crit. Uh, there's a slave drone moving up, just in case I need, need it over there. There's the roll that uh, the engineer made to get the tag back. Okay, tag moves up, is able to get to right here before sliding over this way to see the quars over there. Move myself out of the way. And we are just barely within eight, which is fortunate for my heavy shotgun, which is not gonna be on 17s, right? And the quars is killed by the heavy shotgun. All right, so here's the uh, tag moves around to see the unconscious uh, Asawira. Really don't want him getting back up again, so I give him a full burst of HMG, and you can see two more crits here. So apparently that's the way you kill Asawiras with tags. Just roll at him to crit him. Okay, he's down. Uh, this is now the tag and the Liberto moving up. I'm really just trying to get in a better position for next turn, turn three. There's my enemy's objective down here, kind of lower right. Beeline for the tag. If I can survive the next turn, I just have to run into base contact with it. I'm going second, right? So that is the plan. There's the one moon marker for the tag right there. And there is my assistant fire upgrade for the uh, the drone again. Uh, again, my lieutenant who's in this building is just spending his lieutenant order to do that. Okay, so this is my opponent's other camo token, which, as we know, is the Alhawa. There he is once he reveals. And he reveals... Uh, where is he? He's that way. I'm not sure why I took this picture. But he is off that way over there. And he's kind of coming down this way. Uh, I know that my tag ends up facing the wrong direction. Which is really annoying because he shoots me in the back. Naftoon. Naftoon runs up over here. Is this a picture of the Naft Yeah, there it is. Naftoon moving out right here. Um, it runs all the way up to this corner where it gets a shot at my tag with the flamethrower. I do believe my tag got a turn to face because I wasn't not facing it when, it, when the Naftoon just came around the corner. Yeah, there I am. She flamethrowers me, probably right underneath my picture. And then uh, I survived that and guts test over to here, which is where I am there. Uh, the Naftoon first as she came out shot this way. That's what happened. N Naftoon shoots over here, puts the uh, Liberto into no wounded cap. Within eight is the tag, who takes a turn to face. So then the squares off is facing, kind of like that. So that when she gets up to the corner, I can see her. She flamers me, I shotgun her, I take the save. Uh, she makes the save as well. And I then guts test over to here to now be in cover. Which doesn't really help that much from the flamer, but it's there. And, yeah, there's there's the picture of that interaction. Now I am facing the wrong way. Alhawa comes up, he gets over to here, uh, we get Two discover attempts from the two drones, that one and this one, they make it. That's why he's revealed here. But that doesn't really stop him. He comes around the corner here and takes a uh, in the rear boarding shotgun AP mode shot to the tag. That is a, that's a fine play. Again, the tag has two wounds now, so it's not terribly likely that I'll be killed by it, but working on the tag is going to be good. 
He fires, hits one, Tag makes his save, and he gets stunned by the Ichadron with his assisted fire, you know, shooting back with two fast pulses. Excuse me, assisted reaction, firing back with two fast pulses. Fails Gus test and tucks behind the corner over here. Yeah, there's that. Um, anything, anything else is happening in here? No, nothing else is happening here. Oh, what he does, I guess that was happening there. Yeah, okay. Pitcher. This is a pitcher fired by the Breed. You see the Breed moves up around the corner here, takes a long bomb pitcher shot, lands it perfectly, and then Red Rum's my lieutenant, who's in here. I strike back with a Sucker Punch, which gives him minus three, which is pretty good defense, but I am at minus six, because I'm three for Red Rum, three for going his repeater, so I fail and indeed fully die. There's me taking out my model that I'm using for my Nexus as dead. Okay, now it's my turn, and I'm in loss of lieutenant, and I've got about five guys left or so, Three of them are Morath, so I have three regular orders. First order is on a Zuryat, who's off to the left over here. She peeks around the corner to see the Nafatu with her uh, boarding shotgun, and we all roll fives, so nothing happens. Thinking that I can't waste any more orders on that, the tag just moves off. She fires her flamethrower at me. Um, I think I dodged. Dodging at minus six, so on an 11, and I successfully dodge and get to here. This was the uh, Libertos, no wounded cat marker. So tag moves up to there, and nothing really happens there. Oh, when I repaired my tag, I got my test run, if you will recall, because that was my classified. Okay, this is the tag moving in. Go back to there. Tag moves up to here, where I can see a Liberto and a couple other things. I double heavy shotgun the Liberto. It uh, light shotguns me. I roll a 19 or 20, and I'm just really annoyed that I missed at this really important part. And then I realize that I'm shooting on 20s because I'm plus six for my light shotgun within eight, excuse me, my heavy shotgun within eight, and I'm tall enough that I negate his cover because he's just standing on a box. So we actually have a crit and a hit. Liberto makes one save, but makes the one save that he gets, goes on, uh, into no wounding cap. And I believe with my last order, I just move up to the objective. Mine goes off on me, Liberto shoots me with a chain colt, and uh, Liberto shoots me with a chain colt. Some guy shoots a rifle at me, some flashbot flash bots me. I dodge again against all that. Fail my dodge, but make the only couple armor saves that matter and survive. So my tag is standing on his objective at the end of the game. So this ends up with one objective point for, again, I forgot to change this to Hawk, not military orders, um, and eight for the combined army. Three for holding the objective, three for him not having my objective, and two for my classified. And that'll wrap the game up. It was exciting. Definitely felt on the back foot at the, be at the beginning of my first turn. I definitely did a great recovery by pushing that tag pretty hard. Um, I was very fortunate. That tag made probably like six or eight armor saves while on one wound. Um, yeah, that tag uh, did a lot of work and definitely could have gone poorly if I had failed any of those saves at any point. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the battle report, and if you have any questions, just post them below, and we'll get to them. Thank you much. Ciao.